Painting my dog wearing sunglasses or ski goggles is one of my favorite things, but I hadn't yet done one where the glasses light up, so I'm going to show you in this video how I made this piece. I started with a light bright, which was so much fun and is such a throwback. So the light brights come with sheets that you can trace with pre-made designs. I just flip one of these over and I drew the sunglasses more or less how I wanted them designed. I started plugging these pieces in. Because I was only using a few colors, I ended up having to order two refill packs of just the light pegs. But once these arrived, I tested a couple variations and I landed on this yellow to pink iridium. Once I was happy with the shape of my sunglasses, I used a sheet of trace paper to trace it onto my first layer of plywood, which I had already cut into the overall background flower shape. I then used the jigsaw to cut out the shape of the sunglasses, tested it with the light bright. Once it fit, I sanded it down. I had measured my light bright pegs, which are half an inch tall, so I used a half inch sheet of plywood in order to have the top of my pegs be flush with the top surface of my painting. I then repeated that shape three more times, also on half inch plywood, and I cut a rectangle out of those back three pieces in order to slide the light bright unit in from the back. Quick break to tell Rudy what a good boy he is. This is me saying, you're covered in sawdust, you're a filthy boy. Now I do a final stack, make sure all my pieces are aligning properly. It looks good. So I do a final sand to get rid of any big chunks that might get in the way. Now that all my pieces are nicely sanded, it's time to glue them all together. So I'm just using some standard wood glue and cover each sheet, stack them all together and align them. And then I clamp them down and I'm just gonna let this sit overnight. An hour or two would probably be fine, but I'm gonna come back to this tomorrow. Mm. So the next morning I unclamp this whole thing and as you can see the edges at this stage aren't perfect. No worries, the next thing I do is grab the power sander with a heavy grit. I go around the whole perimeter and I get this down to a flush surface all around the edges. Once that's done, I flip it and I sand the top surface with a finishing grit sandpaper to prep it for the next stage of painting. The next thing I do is start sketching the portrait with a quick outline in graphite, and then I mix up my paints. I had tested out a bunch of background colors, settled on this sky blue, which I paint across the background and all the sides. Next, I mix up a few browns to start my portrait. In the early stages of the painting, my focus is on capturing the shadows. These give the painting depth, which is probably the most important part of achieving a realistic image. For shading, I use a quarter inch flat brush, and as I move along to lighter tones, I mix new paints in without rinsing my brush. My palette ends up taking up the whole right side of my desk. I end up with hundreds of gradients, paint on my elbows, but there is something oddly satisfying with a messy paint palette. It's the one place made better by mess. When I get to the nose, I switch to an 8th inch flat brush. I'm still shading, but at a much smaller scale. Gotta get this perfectly boop worthy. <laughs> Once my shading is complete, I move on to details in the fur and whiskers. For this part, I use a 1 inch liner brush and also a retarder medium, which I mix into my paints in order to lower the viscosity so that I can create these long, beautiful strokes and all these teeny tiny hairs. The details are a lot of fun, and they do seem to be what people comment on the most, but I still stand by that the details don't matter if you don't nail the shading first. As a finishing touch, I paint this light blue outline which I think ties the piece together beautifully. In total it took about two days to build and assemble the wooden components, and then another 10 hours or so of painting, but I'm super happy with how it turned out. Now it's time to test it out with the light bright. Look at that! The cool thing about light brights now is they do all these funky effects. Who knew? Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed it, let me know with a little thumbs up.